In the shadowy mists of ancient history, where the whispers of gods and legends still echo, lies the heart of Babylonian mythology. This world, long vanished beneath the sands of time, was once alive with vibrant tales and powerful deities that shaped the lives of those who lived in Mesopotamia. The civilization of Babylon, one of the greatest cities of the ancient world, was not just a place of grand palaces and towering ziggurats. It was a land where every sunrise was seen as a divine gift, and every nightfall was a time to honor the gods who watched over them. Babylon was more than just a city, it was a cradle of human creativity and belief. Imagine a place where the Euphrates River weaves through the heart of the city like a lifeline, bringing with it both sustenance and dreams. The people of Babylon lived under the gaze of powerful gods, their lives intertwined with the divine forces that shaped their world. The grandeur of their civilization is reflected in their stories and myths, which were not mere entertainment but essential parts of their daily existence and spiritual life. Mythology in Babylon was the pulse of their culture, the essence that gave meaning to their existence. It was more than just stories, it was a sacred framework that explained the mysteries of life and the universe. These myths were not confined to temples or sacred texts, they lived in the conversations of the streets, the songs of the bards, and the rituals performed at dawn and dusk. Through these myths, the Babylonians made sense of their world, from the birth of the universe to the cycles of nature and the fate of their souls after death. Key sources and texts provide a window into this rich mythological world. The Enuma Elish, often called the Babylonian creation epic, is a cornerstone of their mythological heritage. This ancient text tells the dramatic tale of how the world was created from chaos, with the gods battling for supremacy. It is a vivid recounting of the birth of order from disorder, a theme that resonated deeply with the Babylonians as they navigated their own lives and challenges. Another significant text is the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest surviving works of literature. This epic narrates the adventures of Gilgamesh, a king who seeks eternal life and grapples with the divine and mortal realms. His journey reflects the human quest for meaning and immortality, capturing the imagination of the Babylonians and leaving a lasting legacy that echoes through the ages. These stories were more than just historical records, they were living, breathing elements of everyday Babylonian life. The gods of Babylon were not distant or abstract, they were intimately involved in the lives of the people. They were present in the joyous festivals, the solemn rituals, and the everyday acts of devotion that marked the rhythm of Babylonian life. Each god had a specific role and personality, from the wise and creative Enki to the fierce and tempestuous Marduk. Their stories helped the people to understand their place in the universe and their relationship with the divine. As you read through these myths, you can almost hear the murmurs of the ancient Babylonians, whispering their tales of gods and heroes, of creation and destruction. The myths of Babylon are a tapestry of human emotion and divine intervention, woven with threads of hope, fear, and wonder. They tell of the struggles and triumphs of gods and mortals alike, capturing the essence of a civilization that saw the divine in every aspect of their existence. The heart of Babylonian mythology beats in the echoes of their stories, each one a testament to the vibrant and deeply spiritual world they inhabited. It is a reminder of the profound connection between humanity and the divine, a connection that shaped their beliefs and their lives in ways that still captivate and inspire us today. Before the world had shape or form, before there were stars or earth, there was only an endless, dark expanse of chaos. This was the primordial sea, a swirling abyss of nothingness where the very concept of time and space had yet to take shape. It was from this void that the ancient Babylonians believed the universe began, a place of swirling waters and undulating darkness, pregnant with potential and waiting for the first spark of creation. In the heart of this chaos lay the primordial deities, beings of immense power and mystery. The most important of these were Tiamat, the goddess of salt water, and Apsu, the god of fresh water. They were the raw forces of nature, embodying the untamed and boundless essence of the cosmos. Tiamat and Apsu were not just gods, they were the very substance from which the universe would be born. Their presence represented the collision of opposing elements, the fierce dance of creation and destruction. Tiamat's waters were vast and unyielding, her form an endless, churning ocean. 
She was the mother of all things, her body holding the promise of life within her tumultuous depths. Apsu, on the other hand, was the fresh and life-giving force, his waters clear and full of potential. Together, their union was both chaotic and fertile, a volatile mixture that would eventually give rise to the world. As the story goes, from this chaotic partnership came the first stirrings of life. The gods began to emerge from the tumult, beings of power and purpose who would shape the future of the universe. Marduk, one of the most celebrated gods in Babylonian myth, was born from this primordial chaos. His arrival was like the first light piercing through the dark, a beacon that would lead the way to order and creation. The tale takes a dramatic turn when the peace of this cosmic partnership is shattered. The gods, having emerged from the chaos, began to struggle for dominance. Tiamat, once a source of life, became a symbol of uncontrollable chaos, her anger rising as the younger gods began to challenge her authority. This cosmic conflict escalated into a grand battle, a clash of titans that would determine the fate of the universe. Marduk, the hero of the story, rises as a champion of order. He challenges Tiamat, not just in physical battle but in the fundamental struggle between chaos and order. Their confrontation is not just a fight, it is a battle of ideas, of the primal forces that govern existence. Marduk, wielding his power and wisdom, ultimately defeats Tiamat, splitting her body to create the heavens and the earth. Her body becomes the firmament, her blood the sources of life, and her tail the Milky Way. From this conflict comes the ordered universe, a place where gods, humans, and the natural world can coexist. In this story, chaos is not merely an absence of order but a powerful force that must be confronted and transformed. The struggle between Tiamat and Marduk represents the eternal conflict between the unknown and the known, between the untamed and the ordered. It reflects the human experience of wrestling with the uncertainties of life and the desire to create meaning and structure out of the chaos that surrounds us. The origins of the universe in Babylonian myth are more than just a tale of creation, they are a profound reflection of the nature of existence itself. The gods and their struggles mirror the struggles of humanity, capturing the essence of our own quest for understanding and control in a world that often feels unpredictable and vast. Through these ancient stories, the Babylonians made sense of their place in the cosmos, finding comfort in the idea that even the most chaotic beginnings could lead to a world of order and meaning. In the grand tapestry of Babylonian mythology, the gods were more than distant figures of worship, they were the heartbeat of life itself. They hovered in the sky, stirred the waters, and shaped the land. Each deity had a role and a story, their lives interwoven with the very fabric of existence. At the pinnacle of this divine hierarchy was Anu, the king of the gods. He was the embodiment of the heavens, a figure of immense power who presided over all creation. Anu was often seen as the ultimate authority, the one who maintained the cosmic order and ensured the balance of the universe. His presence was both distant and awe-inspiring, a reminder of the vastness of the skies and the order that governs the stars. Enlil, another towering figure in this pantheon, was the god of wind and storm. He was a force of both creation and destruction, controlling the elements that could nurture or devastate. Enlil's breath was felt in the winds that swept across the land and the storms that roared from the heavens. He was the god who could be both a gentle breeze and a raging tempest, symbolizing the power and unpredictability of nature. Enki, the god of wisdom and water, was a different kind of divine presence. He was known for his creativity and benevolence, a god who nurtured life with his knowledge and compassion. Enki's domain was the sweet waters of the earth, the rivers that flowed with life-giving force. He was also the keeper of secrets, a god who held the wisdom of the universe and shared it with those in need. Enki's stories often highlight his role as a savior and protector, using his cleverness to aid humanity and restore balance. These major deities were not alone in their divine realm. The pantheon also included a host of lesser-known gods, each with their unique roles and attributes. They were like stars scattered across the night sky, each one contributing to the cosmic dance of existence. Ninhursag, the mother goddess of fertility and the mountains, played a crucial role in the nurturing of life. She was the embodiment of the Earth's fertility, her presence ensuring the growth of crops and the health of all living beings. 
Her influence was felt in the rich soil and the lush landscapes, a testament to her life-giving power. Ereshkigal, the queen of the underworld, held sway over the realm of the dead. Her domain was a shadowy place, a stark contrast to the lively world above. Ereshkigal's presence was both feared and respected, her role as guardian of the afterlife emphasizing the balance between life and death. She ensured that the souls of the departed found their place in the underworld, maintaining the cosmic order even in the darkest realms. Shamash, the sun god, was a beacon of light and justice. He traveled across the sky each day, his light illuminating the world and his presence symbolizing truth and fairness. Shamash was more than just a sun god, he was a divine witness to the actions of humanity, his rays shining on both deeds of virtue and acts of wrong. Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, was a figure of contrasting emotions and powers. She embodied both the passionate, nurturing side of love and the fierce, destructive nature of conflict. Ishtar's influence was felt in the joys of romance and the terrors of battle, her presence a reminder of the complex interplay between creation and destruction in the human experience. These gods and goddesses were not isolated figures, they interacted with one another and with humanity in ways that were deeply personal and profoundly impactful. Their stories were woven into the fabric of daily life, influencing everything from the changing seasons to the fate of kings and commoners alike. The pantheon of Babylonian gods was a vibrant and dynamic force, a reflection of the world's complexity and the divine presence that shaped every aspect of existence. Each deity, from the grand figures like Anu and Enlil to the lesser-known gods like Ninhursag and Ereshkigal, played a vital role in maintaining the balance of the universe and guiding the lives of those who lived under their watchful eyes. Through their stories, the Babylonians found meaning, comfort, and a sense of connection to the forces that governed their world. In the beginning, when the world was nothing but a swirling chaos of waters, a grand and timeless story began. The Enuma Elish, the epic of creation, is a powerful tale that captures the birth of the universe from this primordial void. It is a story of divine conflict, struggle, and ultimate triumph, a tale that resonates with the very essence of creation itself. The epic starts with a scene of deep, undisturbed chaos. In this vast, unformed space, the primordial deities, Tiamat and Apsu, embody the raw, untamed forces of nature. Tiamat, with her saltwater depths, and Apsu, with his fresh, life-giving waters, are the parents of the gods. Their union creates a tumultuous blend of order and disorder, the raw material from which the world will be shaped. As the younger gods emerge, they disturb the peaceful slumber of Tiamat and Apsu. This disturbance is not just a minor inconvenience, but a cosmic upheaval. Apsu, unable to cope with the noise and chaos, decides to destroy the younger gods. This decision sets off a chain of events that will forever change the universe. Tiamat, initially hesitant, is eventually driven to anger and vengeance by the gods' actions and Apsu's fate. The heart of the story centers on the rise of Marduk, a young and powerful god. Marduk, with his unmatched strength and wisdom, becomes the champion of the younger gods. His role is crucial, as he embodies both the divine will and the hope for order. Marduk's story is not just about physical battles, it symbolizes the struggle to bring order out of chaos, a theme that strikes a deep chord in the human experience. The battle between Marduk and Tiamat is nothing short of epic. It is a clash of primordial forces, a cosmic struggle that determines the fate of the universe. Tiamat, fierce and unyielding, represents the chaotic forces that threaten to overwhelm creation. Marduk, with his powerful weapons and unwavering resolve, takes on the formidable goddess in a battle that will shape the very world. Marduk's victory is not just a personal triumph, but a pivotal moment in the story of creation. After defeating Tiamat, Marduk splits her body in two, using one half to create the heavens and the other to form the earth. This act of creation brings order and structure to the universe. It is a symbolic act of turning chaos into cosmos, a transformation that resonates with the human quest for meaning and stability. The epic also reveals Marduk's role as a ruler and creator. After his victory, Marduk organizes the cosmos, establishing the celestial bodies and setting the rhythms of the natural world. 
he creates the first humans from the blood of a vanquished god, giving them a role in the newly ordered world. This act emphasizes the connection between the divine and the human, a reminder that humanity has a place in the grand design of the universe. The Enuma Elish is more than just a creation myth, it is a profound reflection on the nature of existence and the struggle for order. Its themes of chaos and order, conflict and resolution, resonate deeply with the human experience. The epic portrays the divine struggle to shape the universe, mirroring the human quest to find meaning and stability in a world that often feels unpredictable. This ancient story, with its dramatic battles and divine interventions, captures the essence of creation and the eternal struggle to bring order to chaos. It speaks to the heart of what it means to be human, reflecting our own desires for understanding and harmony in a world full of uncertainty. In the heart of the ancient Babylonian creation myth, two figures stand at the center of a cosmic drama that would shape the universe. Marduk and Tiamat are not just characters in a story, they are the embodiments of profound cosmic forces whose clash defines the origins of everything. Tiamat, the goddess of the saltwater ocean, is both majestic and terrifying. Her form represents the raw, primal chaos that existed before the world took shape. She is the fierce, unrestrained power of the sea, her presence vast and unpredictable. In her, you see the essence of nature's fury, the stormy waves and the dark depths where mysteries and dangers lie. Tiamat is not merely a force to be tamed, she is the embodiment of the untamed power that threatens to overwhelm and destroy. Opposite her stands Marduk, a young and mighty god who embodies the promise of order and creation. With his fierce determination and unparalleled strength, Marduk is the beacon of hope in a world besieged by chaos. He is the god who rises to challenge Tiamat, not just as a warrior but as the champion of a new order. Marduk's role is crucial, he is both the hero and the architect of the universe, destined to bring structure and purpose to a chaotic world. The battle between Marduk and Tiamat is more than just a clash of two deities, it is a cosmic struggle that determines the fate of existence. The scene is set with a dramatic tension that builds to a fever pitch. Tiamat, enraged by the disruption caused by the younger gods, has become a force of unrestrained destruction. She rises against them, her waters churning violently, her power threatening to undo the very fabric of creation. Marduk, armed with his formidable weapons and guided by his unyielding resolve, takes on the challenge. His role is not just to defeat Tiamat, but to transform the chaos she represents into an ordered cosmos. The battle is intense and fierce, with Marduk confronting Tiamat's swirling, tempestuous form in a struggle that echoes through the heavens and the earth. The outcome of this battle is not just a personal victory for Marduk, it is a triumph of order over chaos, of creation over destruction. In the climactic moment, Marduk defeats Tiamat, splitting her body in two. From one half, he creates the heavens, setting the stars and the moon in their places. From the other half, he forms the earth, giving shape to the land and the seas. This act of creation is both a physical and symbolic transformation. The once chaotic Tiamat becomes the ordered universe, her body sculpted into the world that Marduk and the gods will inhabit. The aftermath of the battle sees Marduk taking his place as the supreme deity, not merely as a ruler, but as a creator who has shaped the universe from the raw material of chaos. He organizes the cosmos, setting the rhythms of day and night, the changing seasons, and the celestial movements. Marduk's creation of humanity from the blood of a fallen god underscores the deep connection between the divine and the mortal, highlighting the role of humans in this newly ordered world. The story of Marduk and Tiamat is more than a tale of gods and battles, it is a profound reflection on the nature of existence and the struggle to find order in a world of chaos. It speaks to the heart of human experience, capturing the struggle between the forces of destruction and the yearning for stability and meaning. Through this epic battle, the ancient Babylonians illustrated their understanding of the universe, their hopes, and their fears, crafting a story that still resonates with the power of creation and the eternal quest for balance. In the ancient land of Babylon, where gods and mortals wove their fates together, a tale of great flood and survival unfolds. This is the story of Atrahasis, a hero whose name echoes through the ages, known for his courage in the face of divine wrath and his struggle to preserve life amidst destruction. 
the gods, weary of humanity's noise and chaos, decided to cleanse the world with a flood. It was not a mere rainstorm, but a deluge so powerful that it threatened to wash away all of creation. The decision came from the highest divine authority, a response to the perceived disorder and the constant clamor of humanity. The gods, once seen as benevolent and nurturing, now took on a vengeful aspect, determined to erase their creations and start anew. Amidst this divine plan, a god named Enki, who was known for his wisdom and compassion, chose to defy the decision. He had always been a protector of humanity, and his heart could not bear to see all life perish. Enki went to Atrahasis, a wise and righteous man, and revealed the god's plan. He told him to build a great boat, a vessel that would survive the impending flood. This warning was both a gift and a burden, a chance to save life, but also a daunting task. Atrahasis, with his heart full of resolve and faith, began the monumental task of building the boat. The construction was no small feat, it required immense effort and determination. As the floodwaters began to rise, Atrahasis and his family boarded the boat, along with pairs of every animal, ensuring the preservation of life. The boat, a symbol of hope and survival, floated on the rising tide as the world below was consumed by water. The flood lasted for days, a relentless torrent that covered the earth and wiped away the old world. Atrahasis and his passengers were surrounded by nothing but water, a vast and unending ocean that seemed to stretch beyond the horizon. The immense pressure of survival, the uncertainty of whether the waters would ever recede, and the isolation on the boat must have been overwhelming. Yet, Atrahasis held on to hope, guiding his vessel through the chaos. When the waters finally began to subside, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop, a place of safety and new beginnings. The world had been reborn, cleansed of its previous turmoil. Atrahasis emerged from the boat, witnessing a world that had been reshaped by divine will and human perseverance. The flood had erased the old, but it also allowed for a fresh start, a chance to rebuild and renew. The myth of Atrahasis is not just a story of survival, but a profound reflection on the relationship between humanity and the divine. Atrahasis emerges as a hero not merely for his bravery, but for his role as a mediator between gods and humans. His trials symbolized the challenges of life, the struggle to maintain hope and faith in the face of overwhelming odds. This ancient narrative also bears striking parallels to other flood myths, such as the biblical story of Noah. These similarities highlight a shared human experience of disaster and redemption, a universal theme that transcends cultures and time. The story of Atrahasis, with its vivid imagery and emotional depth, continues to resonate as a testament to the endurance of the human spirit and the timeless quest for survival amidst divine trials. In the end, Atrahasis' story is a powerful reminder of the delicate balance between creation and destruction, hope and despair. His journey through the flood and his role in preserving life echo through history, touching hearts and inspiring all with the courage and resilience that define the human experience. In the heart of ancient Babylon, there lived a king whose story would echo through the ages. Gilgamesh, a mighty ruler and a man of extraordinary courage, became the hero of one of the greatest epics ever told. His story is not just one of conquest and glory, but a profound quest for meaning, friendship, and the very essence of life itself. The epic begins with Gilgamesh at the height of his power. He is a king of unmatched strength and wisdom, but his greatness is tempered by a deep, unshakable sorrow. Despite his achievements and the admiration of his people, he faces a profound sense of emptiness. His journey is both physical and spiritual, a quest to find something beyond the bounds of human existence. Gilgamesh's tale takes a dramatic turn with the arrival of Enkidu, a wild man created by the gods to challenge Gilgamesh's arrogance. Their initial clash turns into a deep and lasting friendship, a bond forged in the heat of battle and strengthened by shared adventures. Together, they face terrifying creatures and undertake heroic feats, their friendship a beacon of strength and hope. One of their greatest adventures is the journey to the Cedar Forest, where they confront Humbaba, the fearsome guardian of the forest. This battle is not just a fight for glory, but a test of their bravery and resolve. Humbaba's defeat brings them fame and the blessings of the gods, but it also sets off a chain of events that will lead to their greatest trials. 
Tragedy strikes when Enkidu falls ill and dies, leaving Gilgamesh devastated. The loss of his friend plunges Gilgamesh into a deep despair. Confronted with the reality of mortality and the fleeting nature of life, he sets out on a desperate quest for eternal life. His journey leads him to the edge of the world, where he meets Utnapishtim, a wise figure who holds the secret to immortality. Utnapishtim reveals to Gilgamesh the story of the Great Flood, a tale that mirrors the myth of Atrahasis. The Flood narrative is a sobering reminder of the limits of human power and the inevitability of fate. Utnapishtim's story emphasizes the impermanence of life and the futility of seeking to escape it. Despite his efforts, Gilgamesh learns that immortality is not meant for humans, but is reserved for the gods. Despite his failure to achieve eternal life, Gilgamesh's journey is not in vain. He returns to his city with a newfound understanding and a sense of peace. He accepts the reality of mortality and the importance of living a meaningful life. His story becomes a testament to the human experience, capturing the essence of struggle, friendship, and the search for purpose. The Epic of Gilgamesh is a powerful narrative that touches the very core of human existence. It explores themes of heroism, friendship, loss, and the quest for meaning. Through his trials and encounters with deities, Gilgamesh's journey becomes a profound reflection on the nature of life and the legacy we leave behind. Every hero's tale is a journey into the unknown, filled with challenges, revelations, and growth. In Babylonian mythology, this timeless pattern of heroism shines brightly, echoing through ancient stories with a resonance that touches the soul. The hero's journey in these myths is a reflection of universal truths, capturing the essence of human struggle and triumph. At the heart of Babylonian heroism is the story of Gilgamesh. His saga is a powerful example of the hero's journey, following a structure that is both compelling and deeply moving. Gilgamesh starts as a king with immense power and strength, but lacking in true understanding of life and its deeper meanings. His journey begins with a call to adventure, driven by a sense of dissatisfaction and the desire for more. The hero's call is often a moment of profound discontent or a challenge that propels him into a new, unknown world. In the beginning, Gilgamesh faces the trials of friendship and conquest alongside Enkidu. Their journey to the cedar forest to confront Humbaba is a classic hero's challenge, where the duo must overcome great dangers and prove their worth. These trials are not just physical but also moral, pushing them to confront their own limits and fears. The battle with Humbaba is a turning point, marking their entry into a realm of divine and earthly conflict. It's a struggle that tests their courage, strength, and honor. Tragedy strikes with Enkidu's death, plunging Gilgamesh into a profound crisis. This moment of loss is a crucial part of the hero's journey, marking the descent into darkness and the confrontation with personal despair. Gilgamesh's grief and subsequent quest for immortality symbolize the hero's search for meaning beyond the physical realm. His journey to Utnapishtim, the keeper of the flood story, is a quest for wisdom and understanding, a search for the answers to life's greatest questions. In his encounter with Utnapishtim, Gilgamesh learns about the Great Flood, a story that mirrors other ancient flood myths. This revelation is a turning point, offering him a deeper insight into the nature of existence and the limits of human power. Despite his efforts, Gilgamesh learns that eternal life is beyond human reach, highlighting the theme of acceptance and the recognition of one's own place in the grand scheme of things. The hero's journey in Babylonian mythology is marked by common themes that resonate across different cultures and epics. These include the call to adventure, the trials and tribulations, the descent into darkness, and the ultimate return with newfound wisdom. Each step of the journey reflects a universal struggle, a quest for understanding, and a path to personal growth. Comparing this journey with other mythologies, such as the Greek myths of Hercules or the Indian epic of the Mahabharata, reveals striking similarities. In Greek mythology, Hercules undertakes his twelve labors, facing immense challenges that test his strength and character. Similarly, in the Mahabharata, the hero Arjuna confronts his own doubts and fears in the battle of Kurukshetra, seeking guidance from the divine Krishna. What binds these stories together is the universal nature of the hero's journey. Each culture's myths reflect a deep understanding of human struggles and the quest for meaning. 
whether it's the trials of Gilgamesh, the labors of Hercules, or the spiritual battles of Arjuna, these stories capture the essence of heroism and the human condition. They speak to our deepest fears and aspirations, resonating with a timeless truth that transcends borders and generations. In the end, the hero's journey in Babylonian mythology is more than just a series of events, it is a reflection of the human spirit's quest for meaning and purpose. The themes of struggle, loss, and redemption are universal, touching the hearts of those who hear these ancient tales. Through the trials of Gilgamesh and other heroes, we find a mirror to our own lives, revealing the profound truths that connect us all. In the grand tapestry of Babylonian mythology, one deity stands out with a profound aura of wisdom and creativity. Enki, also known as Ea, is a god whose influence touches the very essence of creation and knowledge. His role is nothing short of extraordinary, shaping the world and guiding humanity with his deep wisdom and magical powers. Enki's story begins in the primordial chaos, where he played a crucial role in shaping the universe. As the god of creation, Enki possessed the knowledge and power to mold the world from the raw elements of chaos. He crafted the earth and the heavens, bringing order to the formless void. His touch was not merely about physical creation, but about instilling life and purpose into every corner of the cosmos. Imagine the world as a vast, untamed expanse, waiting for a guiding hand. Enki's role was to bring this world to life, to transform the chaotic sea and the barren land into a flourishing habitat. His creativity was not just an act of shaping matter, but an act of imbuing it with meaning. Through Enki's guidance, the rivers flowed, the plants grew, and the animals thrived. He breathed life into the world, making it a place where every being had a purpose and every moment held significance. But Enki's gifts did not stop at creation. He was also the god of wisdom and magic, wielding powers that extended far beyond the material world. His wisdom was a light that guided gods and mortals alike, illuminating the path through darkness and uncertainty. Enki's knowledge was not just academic, it was practical and profound, offering solutions to the most pressing problems and providing insights into the mysteries of existence. In the myth of Atrahasis, Enki's wisdom shines brightly. When the gods decided to send a flood to wipe out humanity, it was Enki who defied their decision. He could not bear to see his creations perish and thus revealed the plan to Atrahasis. This act of compassion and foresight was not just a rescue mission, but a testament to Enki's deep connection with humanity and his commitment to preserving life. His intervention ensured that knowledge and life continued, even in the face of divine wrath. Enki's role as a god of magic further amplified his impact. Magic, in ancient times, was seen as a bridge between the human and the divine, a way to harness supernatural forces for healing, protection, and guidance. Enki's mastery over magic made him a revered figure, someone who could invoke blessings, dispel curses, and offer divine support. His magical powers were not just displays of grandeur, but practical tools that helped gods and mortals navigate their lives. The importance of Enki's wisdom and magic is reflected in the Babylonian pantheon. He was not just a creator, but a protector, a guide, and a healer. His presence was felt in every aspect of life, from the smallest rituals to the grandest cosmic events. His wisdom shaped the laws, guided the rulers, and influenced the lives of everyday people. Enki's influence was a reminder that knowledge and compassion are intertwined, that true wisdom lies in understanding and nurturing the world around us. Enki's legacy is a testament to the power of creation and the depth of wisdom. His role in shaping the world and guiding humanity with his magical prowess remains a profound symbol of hope and enlightenment. In the ancient myths, Enki stands as a beacon of knowledge and compassion, a god whose impact transcends time and continues to inspire awe and reverence. His story is a heart-touching reminder of the divine connection between creation, wisdom, and the enduring spirit of life. In the shadowed corners of Babylonian mythology, the underworld looms as a place of mystery and solemnity, a realm where the departed journey into the unknown. The Babylonians had a unique view of the afterlife, one that paints a vivid picture of what lay beyond death and the deities who governed this hidden domain. The underworld, known as Kur, was not a place of fiery torment or heavenly reward, but rather a shadowy, somber realm where souls wandered. 
The afterlife was seen as a continuation of existence, but without the joy and vitality of life on earth. It was a realm of darkness and stillness, where the dead resided in a state of gloom and quiet. This view reflected the harsh reality of existence after death, a place where the soul continued its journey but without the vibrancy and interaction of the living world. Ereshkigal, the queen of the underworld, reigned over this shadowy domain with a presence both powerful and imposing. Her role as the ruler of Kur was central to the Babylonian understanding of the afterlife, Ereshkigal was depicted as a formidable goddess who commanded respect and awe. She was both revered and feared, embodying the inescapable fate that awaited every soul. Ereshkigal's presence in the underworld was not merely about rule, but about maintaining balance and order in the realm of the dead. Her reign ensured that the souls of the departed were managed and their journey through the afterlife was controlled. The underworld, under her command, was a place where the souls existed in a state of permanence, neither suffering nor enjoying, but simply existing. Nurgle, another significant deity of the underworld, played a crucial role in the realm of the dead. He was often associated with war and destruction, and his presence in the underworld added a layer of complexity to the Babylonian afterlife. Nurgle's role was not just about overseeing the dead, but also about maintaining the balance between life and death. His association with death and the underworld underscored the connection between destruction and renewal, highlighting the cyclical nature of existence. Nurgle's interactions with Ereshkigal were marked by both conflict and cooperation. In some myths, he was depicted as a rival to Ereshkigal, challenging her authority, while in others, he worked alongside her to govern the underworld. This duality reflected the complexities of the afterlife, where different forces and deities managed the souls and maintained the order of the realm. The Babylonian afterlife, governed by Ereshkigal and Nergal, was a place of quiet reflection rather than torment or bliss. It was a realm where the dead continued their existence in a state of muted permanence. The souls in Kur were seen as existing in a sort of limbo, removed from the vibrancy of the living world but also free from the trials of life. This view of the afterlife was a poignant reminder of the inevitability of death and the continuity of existence beyond the mortal coil. It painted a picture of death not as an end, but as a transition into another form of being, where the soul continued its journey under the watchful eyes of powerful deities. Ereshkigal and Nergal, with their commanding presence and complex roles, embodied the profound mystery of the afterlife, offering a glimpse into the ancient Babylonian understanding of what lay beyond the final breath. In the land of ancient Mesopotamia, every hill, river, and city had a story to tell. Sacred places were more than just locations on a map, they were the heartbeat of the divine, where the threads of mythology and reality intertwined in a dance of reverence and wonder. The geography of Mesopotamia was deeply woven with the myths and legends of its people, shaping their spiritual and cultural identity in profound ways. One such sacred place was the city of Babylon itself. This city was not just the center of power and culture, it was considered a divine realm on earth. The towering ziggurats, especially the famous Tower of Babel, symbolized a bridge between the gods and humanity. They were architectural marvels that reached for the heavens, reflecting the people's aspiration to connect with the divine. Babylon was the seat of Marduk, the chief god of the Babylonian pantheon, and every brick of the city was imbued with his presence. The grandeur of Babylon mirrored the majesty of its gods, making it a focal point in the mythological landscape. Not far from Babylon stood the ancient city of Uruk, which played a central role in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uruk was more than a city, it was a symbol of Gilgamesh's power and legacy. Its massive walls and grand temples were not just feats of engineering, but sacred spaces where the divine and mortal realms met. The city was believed to be blessed by the goddess Inanna, who was associated with love and war. Inanna's presence in Uruk made the city a living testament to her divine influence, reflecting her power and grace. The river Euphrates, winding its way through the land, was also considered a sacred entity. In Mesopotamian belief, rivers were not mere bodies of water but divine lifelines. They were seen as channels through which the gods communicated with the world. The Euphrates, along with the Tigris, was vital to agriculture and life in Mesopotamia, but it was also revered as a divine force. 
The rivers were believed to have the power to bless or curse the land, and rituals were performed to honor them and ensure their favor. Mountains held their own sacred significance. For instance, the mountain known as the Holy Mountain in some myths was believed to be a place where the gods gathered and made decisions. It was a spot where heaven and earth touched, making it a site of immense spiritual power. Pilgrims and priests would travel to these sacred heights to seek divine favor and guidance, understanding that the gods' presence could be felt in the winds and echoes of the mountains. The mythological geography of Mesopotamia was not static, but lived and breathed through the stories of its people. Each sacred place was a reflection of divine power and human aspiration. They were not just physical locations, but spiritual landmarks, anchoring the myths and legends that shaped the Mesopotamian worldview. In every corner of this ancient land, the sacred and the mortal converged. The cities, rivers, and mountains were more than mere settings. They were the stages upon which the drama of the gods and heroes played out. Through these sacred places, the people of Mesopotamia experienced a world where the divine was ever-present, guiding and influencing their lives with a touch that was both profound and tangible. In the heart of ancient Babylonian mythology, there's a tale of love, loss, and the changing seasons that captures the very essence of life's cyclical nature. The myth of Ishtar and Tammuz is a poignant story that intertwines the fates of gods and mortals, painting a vivid picture of the eternal dance between life and death. Ishtar, the powerful goddess of love and war, is at the center of this dramatic narrative. Her beauty and strength are renowned, and her presence commands both awe and reverence. Yet, beneath her divine exterior lies a vulnerability that drives the story forward. Driven by a mixture of curiosity and grief, Ishtar embarks on a perilous journey to the underworld, a realm ruled by her sister Ereshkigal. Her descent into the underworld is a powerful symbol of both sacrifice and transformation. The underworld, a place of shadow and silence, contrasts starkly with the vibrant world above. As Ishtar ventures into this dark realm, she leaves behind the warmth of life and light, stepping into a place where the rules are harsh and the consequences severe. Ishtar's descent is not just a physical journey, but a profound emotional and spiritual one. She is stripped of her divine powers and adorned with the simple garments of the dead, a stark reminder of her vulnerability. Her arrival in the underworld is met with coldness and fear. Ereshkigal, the queen of this realm, receives her sister with a mix of apprehension and disdain. The underworld is a place of finality and acceptance, and Ishtar's presence disrupts the established order. As Ishtar is held captive in the underworld, the world above falls into despair. The seasons change, and the land grows barren and desolate. This cosmic shift reflects the impact of Ishtar's absence on the earth. The cycle of life is thrown into disarray, and the people mourn the loss of their goddess of fertility and love. Nature itself seems to weep, echoing the grief of the mortal realm. Tammuz, the god of fertility and the lover of Ishtar, plays a crucial role in this myth. His presence is both a symbol of life's renewal and a reflection of the seasonal cycles. Tammuz's relationship with Ishtar is tender yet fraught with the challenges of mortality. When Ishtar is trapped in the underworld, Tammuz's sorrow becomes a poignant reminder of the interconnectedness between love and loss. In the myth, Tammuz's role is intertwined with the changing seasons. His death and subsequent mourning by Ishtar symbolize the end of a cycle, while his eventual return signifies the renewal of life. This cyclical nature mirrors the agricultural patterns of ancient Mesopotamia, where the death of the land in winter was followed by the rebirth of spring. The story of Ishtar and Tammuz is not just a tale of gods, but a reflection of the human experience. It speaks to the universal themes of love, separation, and the hope of renewal. The cyclical patterns of the myth mirror the natural rhythms of the world, where periods of darkness and despair are always followed by the promise of new beginnings. As the myth unfolds, Ishtar's eventual return from the underworld brings a sense of restoration and hope. Her ascent symbolizes the return of life and fertility to the land. The balance between life and death, joy and sorrow, is restored, reflecting the eternal cycle of existence. In the myth of Ishtar and Tammuz, the gods' struggles and triumphs serve as a powerful metaphor for the cycles of nature and human emotions. 
It is a story that resonates with the deepest parts of our souls, reminding us of the enduring power of love and the inevitability of change. Through the lens of this ancient tale, we glimpse the timeless dance between light and darkness, loss and renewal, that defines the human experience. In the ancient myths of Babylon, the creation of humankind is a story steeped in divine intention and cosmic drama. It reveals a powerful connection between the gods and humanity, a bond forged in the fires of creation and necessity. This story is not just about how humans came into being, but also about the profound relationship between gods and mortals. The tale begins in the aftermath of chaos, with the gods working tirelessly to bring order to the world. The ancient texts tell of a time when the gods were overwhelmed by the labor required to maintain the cosmos. They needed beings who could share in their toil, who could tend to the earth and relieve the divine burden. In their divine counsel, the gods decided that humanity would be created to serve this purpose. However, the act of creating humans was not a simple one. It involved a divine assembly and a blend of elements from both the divine and earthly realms. The goddess Aruru, a figure of great significance in Babylonian mythology, played a key role in this creation. Her hands, guided by the gods, shaped the very essence of humanity. The process was both sacred and arduous. The gods mixed clay with the blood of a slain deity, weaving together the physical form of humans. This act of creation was more than just the assembly of a body, it was the installation of life and purpose. The gods imbued these clay figures with a spark of their own divine essence, giving humanity not just form but a soul and a sense of purpose. Humans were created to be the caretakers of the earth, to cultivate the land, and to honor the gods through rituals and offerings. The gods envisioned a world where humans would act as stewards of creation, working the land and sustaining the divine order. This vision was as much about balance as it was about service. The gods needed humanity to maintain the world, and in return, they bestowed upon them the gift of life and a place within the divine plan. The relationship between the gods and humanity was thus established as one of mutual need and respect. The gods provided humans with the tools of civilization and the gifts of agriculture, wisdom, and culture. Humans, in turn, were to offer their devotion and perform rituals that honored the gods. This exchange created a delicate balance where the divine and mortal realms were intertwined in a shared purpose. Yet, this relationship was not without its trials. The creation of humans was accompanied by a series of challenges and tests. The gods, aware of the potential for conflict and hardship, set in place trials that would test human resilience and faith. These trials were a way of ensuring that humanity remained humble and dedicated to their divine purpose. The myth also reflects the belief that humans, though created from divine elements, were not gods themselves. They were mortal beings with limitations, but they were still integral to the divine order. This sense of humanity's place in the cosmos was a reminder of their role and their connection to the gods. Through the creation myth, the Babylonians expressed their understanding of the world and their place within it. The gods' decision to create humans was a testament to their need for balance and order, and humanity's role was to uphold this divine plan. The myth underscores the profound connection between the divine and mortal realms, a relationship built on mutual respect and shared responsibility. In this ancient narrative, the creation of humanity is not just a story of origin but a reflection of the deep bond between gods and humans. It is a tale that speaks to the fundamental nature of existence and the enduring connection that binds the two realms together. The gods shaped humanity with care and purpose, entrusting them with the responsibility of maintaining the world and honoring the divine. This sacred relationship forms the heart of the myth, capturing the essence of what it means to be human in a world guided by divine forces. In the heart of ancient Babylon, the echoes of rituals and religious practices can still be felt, resonating through the temples and ceremonies that once shaped daily life. These practices were not just acts of devotion, but profound expressions of belief, meant to bridge the gap between the mortal and divine. Temples stood as towering symbols of devotion and divine presence. They were not merely buildings, but sacred spaces where the divine touched the earth. These grand structures were meticulously designed and adorned to honor the gods. Inside, the air was thick with incense, 
and the walls were adorned with intricate carvings and frescoes depicting scenes from myth and legend. Every detail was crafted to reflect the majesty of the deities and to create an environment that was both awe-inspiring and reverent. Offerings were a central part of worship. These were not just gifts, but expressions of gratitude and devotion. Every offering, whether it was food, drink, or precious items, was carefully prepared and presented. The act of giving was a way to maintain favor with the gods and to ensure their continued blessings. Offerings were placed on altars and in sacred vessels, and they were often accompanied by prayers and chants. The rituals surrounding these offerings were precise and solemn, underscoring the deep respect and care with which they were made. Worship practices were woven into the fabric of daily life. Priests and priestesses, clad in ceremonial garments, performed rituals designed to appease and honor the gods. These rituals included elaborate ceremonies, sacrifices, and prayers. Each act was performed with great attention to detail, reflecting the belief that the gods were ever-present and deeply involved in the affairs of the world. The rituals often reenacted mythological stories, allowing worshippers to participate in the divine drama and to feel connected to the gods through their own actions. Myth played a crucial role in these religious ceremonies. It was not just a collection of stories, but a living tradition that gave meaning and context to the rituals. Myths were recited, dramatized, and embodied in the ceremonies, making them a vivid part of religious life. By participating in these mythological reenactments, worshippers felt as though they were reliving the divine actions and events that shaped their world. This connection to the myths added a layer of depth and significance to the rituals, making them not just acts of devotion, but moments of spiritual communion. The role of myth in religious ceremonies was also a way to teach and reinforce the values and beliefs of Babylonian society. Through rituals and stories, the myths conveyed important lessons about the gods, the natural world, and human behavior. They served as a guide for how to live in harmony with the divine and with each other. The ceremonies were not just performances, but educational experiences that connected the past with the present and the divine with the mortal. Every ritual, every offering, and every prayer was an expression of the deep and abiding connection between the people and their gods. It was a way to seek divine favor, to express gratitude, and to ensure that the balance of the world was maintained. The meticulous nature of these practices reflected a profound respect for the divine and an understanding of the gods' importance in the daily lives of the Babylonians. In these ancient rites and ceremonies, the divine and the mortal were intertwined in a sacred dance. The temples, offerings, and worship practices created a space where the gods were honored and the myths lived on, shaping and guiding the lives of those who sought to honor them. Through these rituals, the ancient Babylonians expressed their devotion, maintained their spiritual balance, and kept the divine presence alive in their world. In the ancient land of Babylon, kings were not merely rulers, they were seen as divine representatives, chosen by the gods to govern and guide their people. The concept of divine kingship was deeply woven into the fabric of Babylonian society, imbuing the role of the king with a sacred and almost otherworldly significance. From the moment a Babylonian king ascended to the throne, he was believed to be anointed by the gods themselves. This divine endorsement was not just a symbolic gesture, but a profound affirmation of the king's authority and legitimacy. The king was seen as the earthly embodiment of the divine will, responsible for upholding the gods' interests and ensuring the prosperity and stability of the kingdom. One of the most vivid examples of this divine kingship is found in the reign of King Hammurabi, one of the most famous rulers of ancient Babylon. Hammurabi's rule was marked by his creation of the Code of Hammurabi, one of the earliest and most complete written legal codes. This code was not just a collection of laws, but was presented as a divine gift, handed down from the gods. In inscriptions that accompanied the code, Hammurabi is depicted receiving the laws directly from Shamash, the sun god and the god of justice. This divine endorsement not only lent legitimacy to his rule, but also reinforced the idea that the laws he enacted were the will of the gods, making them sacred and unassailable. The divine mandate was also vividly illustrated in the ceremonial aspects of kingship. Kings often participated in elaborate rituals designed to demonstrate their divine favor and connection. 
During these ceremonies, the king would wear elaborate garments and participate in symbolic acts that underscored his role as a divine representative. These rituals were not just for show, they were believed to invoke the gods' blessing and ensure their continued support for the king's reign. Another significant example of divine kingship can be seen in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II, a king whose very name evokes the grandeur of ancient Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar II is renowned for his monumental building projects, including the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. His reign was marked by an intense effort to display his divine favor and secure his place in the favor of the gods. He undertook grand construction projects, not just as a demonstration of his power, but as acts of devotion to the gods. These projects were seen as expressions of his divine mandate, reinforcing the belief that his rule was sanctioned by the gods and that his actions were guided by divine will. The concept of divine kingship also involved a strong connection between the king and the divine realm. The king was expected to communicate with the gods, interpret their will, and act as a mediator between the divine and mortal worlds. This role was not only political but spiritual. The king's actions were believed to have direct consequences for the kingdom's prosperity and stability. If the kingdom flourished, it was seen as a sign of divine favor. If it fell into disarray, it was viewed as a sign of divine displeasure. The divine legitimacy of a king was reinforced by the careful construction of royal narratives and inscriptions. Kings would often commission monuments and inscriptions that chronicled their deeds and emphasized their divine approval. These records were meant to immortalize the king's achievements and demonstrate his ongoing connection to the gods. They served as a powerful tool for reinforcing the king's divine authority and for ensuring that his legacy would be remembered and respected. In this sacred vision of kingship, the boundaries between the mortal and divine were blurred. The king was not just a ruler, but a living symbol of divine will, chosen to lead and protect his people under the guidance of the gods. The divine mandate provided the king with the legitimacy to rule and the responsibility to act in accordance with the god's will. This profound connection between the divine and the earthly was central to the stability and continuity of the Babylonian Empire, shaping not only the course of its history, but the very nature of its society. In ancient Babylon, magic was more than mere superstition. It was an integral part of daily life and belief, deeply entwined with the very fabric of their mythology. It was viewed as a powerful force that could shape reality, influence the gods, and provide insight into the unseen. Magic and divination were not just practices, but profound expressions of faith and connection to the divine. The role of magic in Babylonian mythology was both revered and complex. It was believed that the gods themselves wielded magic, and this divine power was reflected in the practices of the Babylonians. Magic was seen as a bridge between the human and divine realms, a way to tap into the hidden forces of the universe. It was used to heal, to protect, and to control the natural world, and it was deeply embedded in their religious rituals and ceremonies. One of the most striking aspects of Babylonian magic was its association with the divine. The gods were believed to possess immense magical power, and this power was mirrored in the magic practiced by humans. For instance, the god Marduk, one of the most important deities, was known not only for his role as a creator, but also for his mastery of magical arts. His ability to command magical forces was a testament to his supreme status and influence. This divine connection made magic a sacred and powerful practice, one that was closely aligned with religious beliefs and rituals. Methods of divination in Babylon were intricate and varied, reflecting their deep desire to understand and control the unknown. Divination was seen as a way to communicate with the divine and to gain insight into the will of the gods. It was a practice imbued with great significance and was considered essential for making decisions and predicting the future. One of the most common methods of divination was the interpretation of omens. This involved observing natural phenomena, such as the flight patterns of birds or the behavior of animals, and interpreting their meaning. The Babylonians believed that these omens were messages from the gods, offering guidance and warnings. For example, if a particular bird flew in a specific pattern, it might be seen as a sign of impending events, and careful interpretation was required to understand the message. 
Another important method was astrology, which involved studying the movements of celestial bodies and their influence on human affairs. Babylonian astrologers meticulously charted the stars and planets, believing that their positions could reveal information about the future. This form of divination was deeply connected to their mythology, as the movements of the gods in the heavens were mirrored by the movements of celestial bodies. The alignment of planets and stars was thought to reflect divine will and to provide insight into the fate of individuals and the state of the world. The practice of divination also included the use of sacred texts and rituals. Priests and magicians would recite ancient incantations, perform rituals, and read from sacred tablets to gain insight and guidance. These texts were often believed to hold hidden knowledge and magical power, and their careful recitation was thought to invoke divine presence and wisdom. The rituals performed were intricate and precise, reflecting the seriousness with which the Babylonians approached the task of communicating with the divine. The significance of divination in Babylonian mythology was profound. It was not just about predicting the future or seeking answers, but about maintaining a connection with the gods and understanding their will. The practice of magic and divination was a way to navigate the uncertainties of life, to seek divine favor, and to ensure that one's actions were in harmony with the cosmic order. It was a reflection of the deep belief that the divine and the mortal realms were intertwined, and that understanding one's place in this cosmic scheme required the guidance of the gods. In every act of divination and magic, there was a sense of awe and reverence for the unseen forces that shaped the world. The Babylonians approached these practices with a sense of wonder and respect, recognizing that they were tapping into a power far greater than themselves. This connection to the divine was not just about seeking practical outcomes, but about participating in a sacred and ongoing dialogue with the gods. Through their magic and divination, the Babylonians expressed their deep desire to understand and influence the world around them. These practices were more than rituals, they were a testament to their belief in the interconnectedness of the divine and the earthly, and their commitment to maintaining balance and harmony within that relationship. In the ancient city of Babylon, every symbol and artistic depiction carried a profound significance, transforming everyday objects into powerful representations of the divine. The streets and temples were alive with imagery that spoke of gods, myths, and cosmic truths, each symbol and artwork brimming with deeper meaning. Symbols associated with Babylonian deities were not merely decorative, they were a language of the divine. One of the most iconic symbols was the serpent dragon, often linked with the goddess Tiamat. This formidable creature, with its serpentine body and fearsome visage, represented chaos and the primordial forces of the cosmos. Its depiction was not just a fearsome image, but a vivid reminder of the untamed forces that existed before creation, embodying the raw power that the gods had to master. Another powerful symbol was the winged sun disk, often associated with the god Shamash, the sun god and deity of justice. This emblem, with its radiating wings and luminous disk, represented the all-seeing eye of divine justice. It was a reminder that the gods watched over humanity, ensuring that justice and order prevailed. The imagery of the sun disk was not just about the physical presence of the sun, but also about the divine light that illuminated truth and righteousness. The mace was another significant symbol, closely associated with Marduk, the chief god of Babylon. Marduk's mace was more than a weapon, it was a symbol of his authority and power over the forces of chaos. Depictions of Marduk wielding his mace in combat against cosmic enemies illustrated his role as a divine warrior, maintaining order in the universe through his strength and leadership. Art and architecture in Babylon were vivid canvases for these mythological symbols. Temples and palaces were adorned with intricate carvings and frescoes that brought the myths to life. The walls of these sacred spaces often featured scenes of gods and goddesses in action, telling stories of creation, conflict, and divine intervention. These artworks were more than mere decoration, they were meant to communicate the divine narratives and to create a sacred environment where worshippers could feel the presence of the gods. One of the most striking examples of mythological representation in art is the Ishtar Gate, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. This magnificent gate, adorned with images of dragons and bulls, was not just an entrance but a grand statement of divine protection and power. 
the dragons, symbols of the goddess Ishtar, and the bulls, associated with the god Ed, Ed were intricately tiled, creating a vibrant tapestry that celebrated the gods' roles in the city's life. Walking through the Ishtar Gate was like stepping into the Divine Presence, surrounded by symbols that connected the mortal world with the Divine. In Babylonian palaces, the walls were covered with detailed bar reliefs depicting royal ceremonies and divine acts. These artistic representations were designed to showcase the king's divine favor and his role in maintaining cosmic order. Scenes of the king performing rituals or engaging in battles against mythical creatures were meant to reinforce his divine legitimacy and his connection to the gods. The art was both a testament to the king's power and a reflection of the divine order he was expected to uphold. The ziggurats, massive stepped pyramids that served as temple towers, were also imbued with mythological significance. These towering structures, dedicated to the gods, were designed to bridge the gap between the earth and the heavens. Their grandeur and scale symbolized the divine presence and served as a focal point for religious rituals and ceremonies. The ziggurats were not just architectural feats, but also embodiments of the gods' elevated status and their close connection to the earthly realm. In these artistic expressions, every detail was intentional, every symbol was carefully chosen, and every scene was infused with divine meaning. The art and architecture of ancient Babylon were not just physical creations, but spiritual statements designed to bring the myths and the divine presence into the everyday lives of the people. Through these symbols and representations, the Babylonians maintained a constant reminder of the gods' influence and the cosmic order that shaped their world. The echoes of Babylonian mythology resonate through the ages, leaving an indelible mark on cultures far beyond the boundaries of ancient Mesopotamia. The myths and legends of Babylon, rich with gods, heroes, and cosmic dramas, cast long shadows that touch the lives of peoples across time and space, weaving their way into the fabric of later civilizations. As the ancient Babylonians looked to their gods for guidance and understanding, their myths spread and took root in neighboring Mesopotamian cultures. The Akkadians, who followed the Babylonians, absorbed these stories, blending them into their own traditions. The epic tales of gods like Marduk and Tiamat found new forms, influencing the religious and mythological landscapes of the Akkadian Empire. The influence of Babylonian mythology continued through the Assyrians, who built upon these legends, preserving and adapting them as they extended their own empire. In these ways, the gods of Babylon were never truly forgotten but lived on, shaping the spiritual and cultural currents of the region. The influence of Babylonian mythology extended even further into the Greek and Roman worlds, where ancient myths took on new forms and meanings. The Greeks, with their fascination for epic stories and divine drama, encountered Babylonian myths through trade and conquest. The tale of Marduk's battle with Tiamat, for example, echoed in the Greek myth of the Titanomachy, where Zeus and his allies battled the Titans. The imagery of cosmic conflict and divine triumphs mirrored each other as the Greeks absorbed and reinterpreted these Babylonian narratives within their own pantheon. Roman culture, inheriting much from the Greeks, carried these mythological themes into its own traditions. The Romans, ever the synthesizers of earlier cultures, embraced these myths, incorporating them into their religious and literary works. The epic struggles of Babylonian gods found parallels in Roman myths, with gods like Jupiter echoing the power and authority of Marduk. Babylonian symbols and stories were woven into Roman art and literature, blending seamlessly with the rich tapestry of Roman mythology. Even the biblical traditions were not immune to the influence of Babylonian mythology. The Old Testament, written during a time when the Babylonian Empire was a dominant power, reflects echoes of Babylonian mythological themes. The flood narrative in the Bible bears striking similarities to the Babylonian story of Atrahasis, with both tales sharing themes of divine judgment and human survival. The creation myths of Genesis, too, show parallels with Babylonian stories of cosmic creation and order. As the Israelites came into contact with Babylonian culture during the Babylonian exile, these shared themes and motifs seeped into their own religious texts and traditions. Throughout these diverse cultures, the legacy of Babylonian mythology persisted, adapting and evolving as it moved across time and geography. 
the gods, heroes, and cosmic battles of ancient Babylon continue to inspire and shape the myths of later civilizations, each culture adding its own layer of meaning and interpretation. The stories that once spoke to the Babylonians' understanding of their world and their gods became universal themes, resonating with new audiences and becoming a part of the collective human experience. The impact of Babylonian mythology is a testament to the enduring power of these ancient stories. From the palaces of ancient Babylon to the temples of Greece and Rome, and even into the sacred texts of the Bible, the myths of Babylon carried their messages of divine power, cosmic struggle, and human destiny across centuries. In every retelling and reinterpretation, the essence of these myths remained, connecting the past with the present and reminding us of the timeless nature of human imagination and belief. In the quiet corners of dusty libraries and the hushed tones of scholarly debate, the ancient echoes of Babylonian myths still resonate with a powerful and poignant energy. These stories, once vibrant and alive in the bustling streets of Babylon, have traveled through time, preserved in clay tablets and ancient manuscripts, now whispering their secrets to those who seek them. The preservation of Babylonian mythology is a tale of both chance and perseverance. In the ruins of ancient Mesopotamian cities, archaeologists unearthed clay tablets etched with cuneiform script, fragile yet enduring relics that carried the narratives of gods and heroes. These tablets, meticulously inscribed with epic tales, prayers, and rituals, were safeguarded through centuries of neglect and upheaval. They survived invasions, natural decay, and the passage of time to be rediscovered in the 19th and 20th centuries. Scholars, with a blend of reverence and determination, translated these ancient texts, piecing together the myths that once shaped an entire civilization. The process of studying Babylonian mythology is like reconstructing a grand mosaic from shattered fragments. Researchers painstakingly interpret the symbols and stories, each translation revealing more about the beliefs and values of the ancient Babylonians. Every new discovery offers a glimpse into the past, connecting modern readers with the ancient world in profound and unexpected ways. The myths, once confined to the shadows of forgotten history, now illuminate the understanding of the divine and the human experience, bridging gaps between past and present. The continued relevance of Babylonian myths is a testament to their timeless nature. These ancient stories are more than historical artifacts, they are reflections of universal themes that continue to resonate with contemporary audiences. The myth of Marduk's triumph over chaos, for instance, speaks to enduring struggles between order and disorder, a theme that echoes through many cultures and eras. Similarly, the story of the flood in the Epic of Atrahasis, with its messages of survival and divine intervention, mirrors other flood myths, such as those found in the Bible, and continues to captivate and inspire. In literature, art, and popular culture, Babylonian myths have found new life. Writers and artists draw upon these ancient stories, reimagining them in modern contexts and infusing them with new meanings. The grandeur of Babylonian deities and their epic battles become metaphors for contemporary struggles and aspirations, bridging ancient wisdom with modern sensibilities. The visual motifs and symbols from Babylonian art, the mighty Marduk, the fearsome Tiamat, continue to inspire creative works, reminding us of the power of myth to transcend time. Educational and cultural institutions also play a crucial role in keeping Babylonian mythology alive. Museums exhibit artifacts and artworks, bringing the stories of ancient gods and heroes into the public eye. Educational programs and lectures explore the significance of these myths, connecting them with broader themes in mythology and human culture. Through these efforts, the ancient narratives of Babylon continue to educate and inspire, ensuring that the legacy of this rich mythology endures. In every corner of the world, from academic circles to popular media, the myths of Babylon continue to provoke thought, spark imagination, and foster a deeper understanding of human nature and the divine. The stories of the ancient Babylonians, once confined to the pages of history, now resonate with the hearts and minds of people across cultures and generations. Their legacy is a powerful reminder of the enduring nature of myth and the unbroken thread of human curiosity that connects us to our distant ancestors. In the dim glow of candlelight, as shadows flicker on the walls of ancient temples, the timeless stories of Babylonian mythology continue to stir the soul. 
the myths of Babylon, with their grand tales of gods and heroes, offer a profound glimpse into the heart of an ancient civilization that once thrived in the cradle of human history. At the core of these myths is a vivid portrayal of the human condition, captured through the dramatic conflicts and divine interventions that shaped the world of the Babylonians. The epic battles between gods like Marduk and Tiamat, and the heroic quests of figures such as Gilgamesh, reveal a deep understanding of both cosmic and personal struggles. These stories are not merely relics of the past, they are reflections of universal themes that speak to our own experiences of triumph, despair, and hope. The tales of creation, from the chaotic struggle of the Enuma Elish to the flood narratives of Atrahasis, show a profound engagement with the mysteries of existence. They reflect an enduring human desire to make sense of the world around us, to understand where we come from, and to find our place within the grand tapestry of life. The gods in these stories are not distant and unapproachable, they are intimately involved in the affairs of the world and of humanity, mirroring our own search for meaning and connection. Babylonian mythology also provides a window into the daily life and spiritual practices of an ancient people. The rituals performed in grand temples, the offerings made to appease powerful deities, and the divination practices used to seek guidance all highlight the ways in which these myths were woven into the fabric of everyday life. Each story and ritual was a thread in the intricate weave of Babylonian culture, reflecting a society deeply attuned to the spiritual dimensions of existence. As we look back on these ancient stories, we see them not just as historical curiosities, but as powerful narratives that have shaped and been shaped by other cultures. The echoes of Babylonian myths can be heard in the legends of Greece and Rome, in the sacred texts of the Bible, and in the rich tapestry of later traditions. These connections underscore the enduring relevance of Babylonian mythology and its impact on the broader human narrative. The legacy of Babylonian mythology is a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring quest for understanding. These ancient myths, preserved through the ages and reinterpreted by countless generations, continue to resonate with us. They remind us of our shared humanity and our ongoing search for meaning in a world that remains as mysterious and wondrous as it was thousands of years ago. In exploring Babylonian mythology, we are not merely looking at ancient stories, we are engaging with the fundamental questions that have shaped human existence. We are reminded of the beauty and complexity of the myths that once danced in the heart of ancient Babylon, and we are invited to reflect on the ways in which these ancient narratives continue to illuminate our own lives and beliefs.